Welcome to Compelling Conversation. I'm your host, Dush Ramachandran, and I have a very special guest today um, who I think you'll enjoy. She has so many wonderful gifts, and I've managed to persuade her to share her wonderful gifts with us. So please join me in welcoming Pauline Yates to the show. Hi, Pauline. Hi, Dush. It's nice to be with you. It is wonderful. Thank you so much for taking the time. I know you've had a hectic time with all the rains uh, over in the East Coast. Um, but, you know, we had a couple of occasions where we had the show scheduled, the reporting scheduled, and we had to postpone it because of all kinds of issues with power and rain and so on and so forth. But well, everything works out the way it's meant yeah. to. And yeah. uh, I'm so delighted you're here. So um, I know you uh, for, for being a, a really talented poet, which is what I'd love to share with our audience, and also the work you're doing, which is hugely important. But before we dive into that, let's take a step back, if you don't mind. Yeah. I know um, you had uh, a very, very successful uh, design firm, Pauline Yates Design, and uh, you had many offices. You had a showroom in the Flatiron District in New York, which is, of course, uh, something that most designers dream of. Um, and then something happened which caused you to change direction. Tell us about that. That's a, that's a really interesting story. Well, you know, uh, in my 20s, I was fortunate to come across Joseph Campbell. and. And in my 20s, I made a promise to myself that I'd make my living only by following my bliss and doing what I love to do, that I wouldn't compromise. And so it just fed into a really exciting, ambitious life. You know, it, it really was a seamless journey uh, of just falling in love with something, uh, uh, a creative activity and and exploring it. And so I began as a fashion designer. That was my design and art were my, were my uh, study, you know, when I, was, when I was growing up. And so I began as a fashion designer. And uh, I was very lucky uh, to land in my first job in New York uh, with a, a, a name designer, uh, a really good name designer who needed some help um, some conceptual help in putting his, his line and his work together. And I helped him put the line together in such a way that it all became coordinated and it made a really strong statement. And so that line, that season, won a Coty Award, uh, which is a fashion award, you know. In, yeah, in, it is. Yeah. And it's so... Very, uh, very coveted was, award. Yeah, and so it was, a, it was a great thing for me because people knew in the business that I was the person who'd come in and, and made that difference. So I was offered a job running a, a division of Warnico, which at that time was the largest apparel manufacturer, I think in the world, but certainly in the United States. And so it just, uh, it just my career just blossomed. And it, it was a wonderful, just a wonderful, exciting career. And during that time, I, I actually uh, took a course called Ontological Design with a man named Fernando Flores and uh, a Chilean uh, neuroscientist and biologist. And um, they were doing really uh, cutting edge work on the nature of existence and how we think and, and how we evolve and so on. So while I was doing this, running my career, I was taking this course and it took me in a whole new direction. I decided I wanted to do uh, design furniture and design spaces for people to grow into. Um, and my whole idea was to rather than looking at the space, looking at w where the person was going in their life, what their inner life was and where they wanted to be and design a space to, to facilitate that. 
So I began doing that and that took off really well. I, I worked with McKinsey uh, as one of their associates for a while in uh, working with uh, international governments on design projects and so on. So, um, so long story short, I decided that I wanted to open a gallery and uh, a showroom in New York. And I found, I found the mother of all fixer uppers, you know, which was a fabulous space. And so I just plunged into it with absolutely uh, on a wing and a prayer, really. And people just stepped up to help. It's, you know, that whole thing of when you commit to something, all sorts of help comes out of the woodwork, you know. So it took off. It just took off. Our first year, I did a million dollars in the first year, which was, which wow. was to me was stunning at that time. And it just went for 10 years and became a, a fixture in the, in the design world. And so, uh, and then I, I had my furniture in, in New York and Design Center and uh, Los Angeles, Chicago, you know. So, but at the end of my 10 year lease, when it was ready to sign a new lease, something was stopping me. And there was this missing piece, you know, is this all there is? I was at that, is this all there is moment. I've got everything I wanted, all my ambitions, you know, where do I go from here? And there was something else calling to me and I didn't know what it was. It was just this silent, intuitive voice inside me saying, no, you know, don't, it's time to do something else, time to go within. I had no idea what I was going to do. I didn't sign the lease, put my furniture in showrooms, and I came out to my beach house, and I decided I would be here for like 90 days. I came out in the dead of winter. That three months turned into three years, and it turned into a three-year full-blown spiritual retreat, uh, during which time I had profound, I went through layers and layers and layers of the self, peeling away layers. Um, and I just had profound mystical experience and profound awakening. And so I developed an ability to move from between particle and wave form, you know, in, in, in my uh, meditative experiences, oh. experience pure wave energy. And so in that state, there are no barriers. There are no barriers to understanding. There's, there are no barriers to creativity. And that, that experience just changed the, the course of my life and connected me to, to a self they, that I could never have imagined becoming. Uh, I was no longer measured by what I produce, but by who I am. Sure. And, um, you know, at that moment, th this magnificent moment to moment quality of inner state became my compass. You know, that was what my journey was was about from that point on there was nothing left to prove i was just fl i was flowing in waveform Beautiful. so you know a new kind of creative velocity took over what i'm calling creative velocity and so my new imperative became to help others find that you know find that and live their dream and um i began writing poetry again for the first time since my 20s. And, you know, I stopped writing in poetry in my 20s mm -hmm. because I doubted that I had anything really original or worthwhile to say. And suddenly I had something to say. And so the poetry just started pouring out of me. And um, what emerged was this understanding that we as human beings are self-created beings. You know, animals are biologically uh, 
the, their destiny is biologically decided. Mm -hmm. Human beings, we, we actually uh, evolve creatively. We create our own evolution. So, and everything we see in front of us is a reflection of that inner state. And so the greatest accomplishment we have is actually to curate that inner state because that is the nucleus of our experience on this planet and beyond. Right. So, um, so I have been working to help define what that state is. Um, I'm calling it dynamic flow. And it's living in, uh, you know, the way we know of flow is it's this, you know, blown out experience, you know, uh, extreme sports, extreme business accomplishment. But for me, I'm seeing dynamic flow is be living in 24 hour uh, cycles of flow. You know, we wake up, we trip into flow, we you know, we trip over that barrier into flow, you know, and there are various ways we can do that. And then we calibrate flow all day. And we're in this creative state where time constricts or, or expands. And we are just riding that wave of creative velocity. And then by evening time, we go into a, a state of flow recovery you know, relax, have fun, and, and go see and stop the next day. So, um, so that has been uh, really what I've been concentrating on uh, these past five years. Wonderful. So now, um, through this process, um, when, you, when you had that inflection point uh, in your life, where you built this extremely successful design career, you'd got the showroom, you'd got, you'd achieved everything that uh, was the dream of a lot of people, a lot yeah. of designers, and yeah, you decided to uh, make a shift in your, uh, in your career path, in your life path. Yeah. Um, was that when, uh, you mentioned that that's when you started, uh, you know, writing poetry again after not having written for many yeah. years? Would you, yeah. would you care to share some of that poetry with us? Well, yes. Uh, actually, I'd like to share this poem. Uh, you know, we're in this after, in this space of lockdown. You know, yeah. Um, we are all kind of encountering uh, what you know change has been bombarding us, and we're globally in a straight a state of transition, and we're all actually. Uh, leaning into new ways of being and maybe finding new selves, finding new parts of ourself, new ways of being that, that are new to us, you know, after this, this state of really retreat from the world for many of us. Sure. Um, and we're coming, you know, throughout our lives, we keep encountering a stranger within ourselves that we don't yet know, you know, and that stranger pulls us forward into our next, into our next journey. And so COVID has plunged us into this state of shared crisis. So um, I'm, you know, during this quarantine holding pattern, I've started writing a book and the book, um, is based on a poem that I wrote called Find Your Voice. Okay. And I think we're all finding new voices right now. So this poem is called Find Your Voice. And it begins with a quote by Seamus Heaney. If you have the words, there's always a chance that you'll find the way. And you know, we human beings, we, we are created in language. We create our realities and ourselves in language. So first, you find your voice, land on it. Learn how to listen profoundly to yourself. This is your beginning move. Call forth the gift located at your core, the knowledge you always carried waiting there within you. Honor its origin as your own. Speak it out, sing out loud 
write your new story on blank pages and scatter them before the world. Face down your shaming shadow. Stand up to the fear stalker. Scale your wall of vulnerability. Stand tall, proud in the market square. Go public, get soul naked. Flaunt your spark of genius. Take it to the airwaves, strut it in the streets. Magnificent and humbled, speak before the whole world. Here, this is who I am, my gift to you. That is to find your voice. That's brilliant. That's absolutely fabulous. Now, I know, um, you know, I've heard one other poem of yours, um, which, which I absolutely adored. Uh, and it's especially uh, poignant and, uh, and very, very apropos of the time we find ourselves in. Um, and that's the poem, Audacity. Uh, yes. I, I really loved it when I, when I heard it for the first time. Um, would you mind sharing that poem with sure, us? Sure, sure. And you know, when we first start to find our, our voice, audacity is the first move. You know, it has to be the first move. It is indeed. Um, and I call it conscious audacity. Sure. Uh, because, you know, we, we tend to think of audacity as sort of flying off, you know. But, but this is a, a conscious, intentional audacity. And it starts with a quote by Winston Churchill. The first quality that is needed is audacity. And he knew of which he spoke. Audacity is the watchful eye that dares to find an opening and leaps to make the win. Trades a foothold on the precipice and soars, determined to be seen and heard. In the courage to declare itself, audacity presumes what it says matters, knowing that what counts for anyone must be amplified in other hearts. Nature owns audacity's imperative, speed in osprey, stillness in the watching heron, cougar rippling as she lights upon her prey, rooting acorns, reaching for the sky. As high and wide as vision dares to go, audacity displays its gifts, knowing that the passion of a single reverie can move a world. Audacity is conscious, measured, passion swelling out to meet its purpose, a life created in velocity, a perfect partnership with bliss. That's beautiful. That I and I every time I hear that poem, something new reveals itself to me. It's an absolutely amazing poem. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. Um, so, so now, um, having having had this process of spiritual of awakening, if I might call it that you've turned your attention to uh, providing coaching, which is probably too, too mundane a term for what you, what you do for uh, entrepreneurs and business owners, helping them, teaching them how to, how to break out of their molds. So yeah. would you care to describe that a little bit? Yes, well, you know, when you have an experience like this, um, you're called to share it. Right. It's, First thing you want to do, you just want to you know, tell it to the world. Um, but you know, all my work is based first on the understanding that we are an interdependent unity, you know, interdependent oneness. And the premise of living into the, a self-conceived and invented future, you know, co-created with this new self that we're forever growing into and becoming. And stasis doesn't exist in nature. Right. Everything is process, everything is metamorphosis. 
So what I want to do, what I am doing, is helping people navigate. You know, we're in this, in this time of massive change, bombardment of rapid change. And everything that, every assumption that we've had has, has been blown up. And we've come from this hierarchical structure of the, of the, of the prior 200 years, the prior two centuries, you know, the industrial revolution. And that was all built on hierarchy. Sure. Um, and right now we're moving into a, a whole new reality. You know, we, we've come from a world of things and hierarchy into a world of phenomena and network and so there's a whole new way of of operating and thinking and interpreting our world that is necessary in order to in order to innovate in order to run a successful business in order to be competitive and all, in order to keep abreast with the rapid change that we are we are just navigating at every moment um, and it's going to it's going to increase. Uh, you know, now that five G is coming, yeah. we are, we are moving. We're, we're sort of our, our face, our skin is going to be blown back. You know, in, in the wind tunnel. You know, so um, so we really have to find new ways of leadership, new ways of navigating change, new ways of understanding network systems so that we can utilize networks and the you know the shortest space between two points all for all the all everywhere mm -hmm. and um so that we can begin to create and run networks as leaders and the new definition of leadership is a leader creating leaders creating a network of leaders. Because unless and until we're willing to give our people, give our teams the leadership in their own domain, we, we're going to be behind all the time. There are going to be people disrupting, new, newcomers disrupting us, because we're going to need to deal with the change. We're going to need to keep abreast and keep ahead of it all the time. And the only way we can do that is with self-directed teams of leaders. Absolutely. Leaders. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So um, for, for some of our viewers who might be interested in either working with you or exploring uh, mm -hmm. opportunities to work with you, how might they get in touch with you? What's the best way for them to engage? Well, they can reach me at Pauline Yates at me.com. Okay. And I'm setting up right now a new series of programs, uh, which will be launched within the next uh, four to six weeks. So this is really a, a great time to, to connect because um, the, an exciting series of uh, group uh, coaching and group training uh, courses, and also one-on-one -on -one, uh, consulting. Uh, consulting and coaching. But, um, it's really about, it's really about helping people um, find and develop their vision mm -hmm. and, and really do what it takes to live their dream. Wonderful. Create whatever we need to create to empower people to live their dream and move out and take it that out into the world. Beautiful. So if you wouldn't, if you wouldn't mind, if you would send me the links um, to to the course and to to whatever you're developing, uh, I'd be happy to put it in the in the comments down below. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Yes. Pauline, thank you so much for your time. This has been an thank absolute you. delight. Um, thank you for sharing your poetic genius with us. 
uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. And so I'm looking forward to sharing your, your links and your website and everything else that you provide um, okay. with our audience. Excellent. And to our viewers, if you liked what you saw, please go ahead, click uh, the subscribe button at the bottom and like it, and you'll, you'll get to see many more of these types of compelling conversations. Okay. Pauline, thank you so much. Thank you, Dash. It was a pleasure, real pleasure. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.